It was this tank and my desire to get all the colorful African cichlids you see behind me that got me back into this hobby. Let's take a closer look. If you're new to the fish cave, welcome. If you end up enjoying today's video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. This is the third installment of a tank by tank series we're doing of all the tanks. And this is the first one we're covering outside of the fish cave and outside of the rack system. We're here in the living room. I actually have two tanks in the house. This one here in the living room. And we have a, a planted 29 gallon tank in the front room. And today we're going to focus on the Mbuna 55 gallon tank right here behind me. My wife bought me this tank for Christmas two years ago off Craigslist. And from the start, I wanted to do a planted African cichlid aquarium with rocks and driftwood. Um, it didn't start out like that. I actually ended up doing some, uh, some cherry shrimp and some endlers in here for a while. And then I was able to get some uh, African cichlids. And when I first got the African cichlids, there was some wood, some driftwood, as well as some cichlid stones and rocks in there. Eventually, I found these rocks on Craigslist for a really good deal. So I went with an all rock setup, and it's currently one of only two tanks that I own that don't have any plants. Let's talk about the fish. There's three species of African cichlids. All of them are Mbuna, and there's one species of catfish. Um, the three species of Mbuna are a uh, cobalt blue. I'm really bad with the scientific names, so I'm gonna stick those here. It's like a Cali Ganenos or something or other. I'm gonna stick the scientific names down here. But there's the blue ones, cobalt blue. Then there's the orange ones, which on camera, there's orange and yellow and they kind of come up the same. But there's orange ones, which are actually called red zebras. And then you have the yellow ones, which are probably the most common ones in here. They're known as a, a yellow, uh, yellow lab cichlid. There's about six to nine of each species, and they've done fairly well. Um, I added them all very small at the same size, which is really important. As you can see, for the majority, they're similar size. Some are bigger than others. Um, they do pick on each other quite a bit, but I haven't had any type of uh, deaths. They don't seem to be too stressed out. We're going to jump into a feeding montage in just a few, because I think it's really cool feeding this tank and watching them eat. It's one of my favorite tanks to feed. Uh, but let me quickly talk to you about uh, some of the filtration. Uh, there's a Sun Sun 402B canister filter. I bought that. It came with the tank and it's done really well for me. I also keep a sponge filter, one of these dual sponge sponge filters in the back of the tank like I have in every single one of my tanks from you know the 10 gallon tanks all the way up to the big 125. Uh, as you can see, there's a, a hang on back filter right now. Currently, I have a Fluval 30. I usually put that on there when I want a little extra clear water when I'm filming a video or something like I am now. Um, there's a heater in there. I try to keep the temperature right at about 78 to 80. You know, I shoot on the little bit of a warmer side, so I, I shoot for 80. But that 78 to 80 range is what I'm looking for for these guys. These are definitely an aggressive fish. That's why there's plenty of hiding spots and different rocks. And there's kind of an overstocked tank. Like I said, there's 20 plus fish in here. And there's also some catfish. Um, the catfish species is a Cynodontis petricola or Cynodontis lucipinus. I actually had six of them um, due to an unfortunate accident. That was my fault. Uh, I killed five of them uh, about a month or two ago. So there's one lone guy in there. So I really do want to get some more because I think they're one of my favorite fish. I do consider the tank fairly overstocked, not in a bad way, but it's a fairly crowded tank. So I do have a, a power head. It's the cheap Sun Sun power head. There's nothing really crazy going on with this tank. There's a four foot LED light. It's a Marine Land LED light. Um, I don't necessarily recommend you go out and buy one. I use it because I had it. If you follow the channel for a while, you know that I'm all about saving money and not trying to go broke in this hobby. Um, but this substrate is actually something I did buy. It's a, not the most expensive substrate, but it's not you know cheap, cheap either. It's a Carib Sea cichlid sand. I really love it. It buffers the water. I think it looks cool. Um, I'm not a big fan of going and spend a ton of money on substrate, but I am happy with this substrate. I try to keep the front glass as clean as possible, although it's never a perfection. Um, I purposely leave the back and side glass alone. I let algae grow on them. I let algae grow on these rocks. And that's because these fish are mostly uh, a vegetarian. I guess they're omnivores technically, but they, uh, a heavy protein diet is really bad for them. In the wild, they're mostly grazing on the rocks. You probably check it out here. They kind of just like grasp, uh, rasp especially on the rocks. And in the wild, that's how they would eat. Um, but obviously in the home aquarium, we feed them also. So let's do that. Just like any fish, these guys thrive in a nice varied diet of many foods. They prefer and lean towards the, like the veggies as opposed to the protein as they can get bloat if you feed too much heavy protein. And honestly, I strive uh, usually once a week, if not once every other week, I fast them for a day and I have never had any issues with bloat. 
I feed these guys some commercially available foods as well as some veggies. Um, I'm a big fan of New Life Spectrum. I use these uh, Tetra Cichlid Flakes. And um, I'm also, if you guys have been following me for a while, you know I'm a huge fan of, of green beans. Um, as far as veggies, these guys get zucchini sometimes, but green beans is definitely the number one. I'll have an Amazon affiliate link in the description below for the New Life Spectrum and the Tetra Cichlid Flakes. If you're interested in purchasing some, it does help out the channel. You guys hungry? African cichlids as well let me know in the comments down below what kind of African cichlids do you keep in Buna, Peacock, Lake Tanganyika and what do you feed them this tank hasn't changed much lately um, I put most of these fish in here as well as the catfish about a year ago and I haven't really touched the stocking since but I do have some plans moving forward we're gonna um, replenish the catfish but also um, as I mentioned earlier, we have the blue, the yellow, and the orange, but the yellow and the orange are so close in color that I want to rehome one color, the yellow or the orange, and then I'm going to be buying some uh, white Socofolii. I'll put a picture up. I really can't pronounce it, but it's white Socofolii or something. I think those will be a really nice contrast to the blue and then whatever color we end up going with. Drop a comment down below. Which one would you like to keep? Would you rather keep the red zebra, the orange fish, with the blue, or would you rather keep the yellow with the blue? So it's either going to be uh, white, blue, and yellow, or white, blue, and orange. Uh, let me know in the comments below, because I really, I'm really not sure which I want to keep yet. If you want to check out more Fish Cave videos, there's one right there for you. I'm going to pin a video in the comment below that explains why I chose to keep Mbuna over Peacocks. I appreciate you guys watching. Go ahead and hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. As always, stay positive and stay passionate.